morning, everyone. It's so great to see you here today. I um, just want to welcome you. There are uh, several announcements that I'm going to make. Uh, the midweek Bible study is not going to meet this week. And, oh, it says it will not meet this week. Okay, that was wrong. Okay, we'll meet will meet this week. And it's actually not in big capital letters on my sheet. So um, it's uh, the seven feasts of Israel and it's uh, based on Leviticus 23. And I'm assuming it's still 10 o'clock that it says on here. Okay, perfect. Uh, I do know that this one's correct, uh, or at least I think so, that we are still in need of a preschool Sunday school teacher. So if you have any interest in that, and just let's all pray about it. Even if you're not the one who um, feels led to teach preschoolers, we can all pray as a group to um, have God lift someone up to this position. And Christy Peters is the person to um, talk to about that. The offering envelopes for um, 2023 are out in the Narthex, and if you didn't get any, you can contact the church office or Jackie Brazier and uh, let them know, and um, a set will be uh, given to you. Everyone's favorite fellowship meal is this uh, afternoon, and everyone is invited, so directly following the service, uh, the fellowship meal. And after that, the session will meet, and if you've not gotten your packet yet, session members, they're in the Narthex. Um, wonderful news, uh, I remember her as Rachel Pettit, but now she is Rachel Gibson. She is expecting a baby girl, and she lives out in Texas, so she will actually not be able to um, come to us for a baby shower, but the um, we have decided to gather um, money for her to um, get her a gift, and um, or you can get her one on your own. Uh, let me see, it's in, registered on Amazon under her name, Rachel Gibson, and um, you could get her something yourself off of Amazon, or you could mail her a card to her address, whatever, just to recognize her, and that is uh, Cindy and David's daughter, Cindy and David Pettit's daughter, Rachel. And uh, the kitchen work day, that is coming up the late Ladies have scheduled a work day to clean and arrange the kitchen. Um, I hate that they can't come to my house and clean and arrange my kitchen because it is a mess. But it's this Thursday at 9 a.m. So a uh, police plan to come and help uh, get the kitchen in order for that. So um, let's go ahead and have our opening prayer. Almighty God, we just come to you and know that it's a privilege and a joy to praise you. Let us sing with joyful hearts and our prayers. Let us be focused on you and have us open to your word and to trust in your promises, Lord. And give us wisdom to see you clearly. And most of all, let us just pause our busy minds to listen to your Holy Spirit. Lord, we just thank you for being our shepherd, our leader, and our guardian. And just give us the desire to seek you above all else in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand for a responsive call to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come. God's glory has risen upon us. Lift your eyes and look around. See the light of God's hope, the light of God's peace, the light of God's love, the light of God's joy. Praise be to Jesus, the light that has come to shine in the darkness. Please remain standing and sing with us. Oh, Queen. 
creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. We're singing on a strength that glory and power be to you, the only wise being. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come.
without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Let us now declare our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I want to add to my prayer thoughts this morning. Uh, the, the Gibsons remembered them in prayer. Uh, uh, Cindy, it's just, you, you don't look like a grandmother to me. Uh, David, you do. Uh, <laughs> 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 and I, uh, some of us just age differently, I guess, than others. Uh, and, and, uh, some of us look our age even more so uh, than others might look theirs. Uh, we want to remember in our prayers today uh, uh, the list of, of names that you will find in your bulletin. Uh, please uh, note that. Uh, it's on the back of where you find the outline for today's uh, sermon, today's message. Uh, I want you to remember with me also today uh, the family of Gene Adams. Uh, remember all of them in your thoughts and, and your prayers with me this morning. Uh, we had a, a, a service, a private service for the family up on the hill at Croft Acton and yesterday, uh, paying our final respects. And I know the family would appreciate your uh, remembrance of them in your thoughts and your prayers. Uh, also, we want to remember David Pettit again, uh, this time in a more serious way because he is having a, a surgical procedure later this week uh, on Friday. Uh, he's going to have an ablation done, it, and we want to keep uh, him in our thoughts and prayers that this uh, will help get his heart back and, and, and right rhythm again. Uh, also remember with me uh, Dot Jones. Uh, I know Dot has either, she's either just had or she has yet very soon one more chemotherapy to go and then there will be a period of a few weeks before they do a test to see what they have accomplished with, the, with this chemo treatment. So. Continue to remember her in prayer. And, and remember Delinda Jones. This is Dan's sister. Uh, she's in the hospital, and she certainly needs our prayers this morning as well. Uh, and those that are going to be returning from convocation today, uh, they'll be traveling on the roads, uh, coming back from Gatlinburg. Uh, please uh, remember them in your thoughts and your prayers uh, for their safety and, and their travel. Uh, your session, uh, which will be meeting uh, today following the meal that we're going to be having here shortly, uh, please uh, hold them up in your thoughts and prayers as we begin a, a, a brand new year. This will be the first regular meeting of the year for the session. Uh, so hold them up in your thoughts and prayers as we uh, certainly trust God for the, the business that's at hand uh, and that he will direct our, our minds according to his purpose uh, for his glory and for the church's good. Uh, those are just some of the prayer concerns that, that come to mind that I wanted to mention to you. Oh, well, I do want to ask you to lift up the, the Bible study. Uh, it, it, we are going to begin our new Bible study this coming Wednesday. Uh, it'll be at 10 in the morning for those of you who are able to be here. Uh, a reminder uh, for those of you who cannot, you can find this Bible study through our Facebook on YouTube, uh, and it'll be available for you there to follow along with us. We're going to be doing a study on the seven feasts of Israel. Now, mind you, uh, the nation had more feasts than seven, but these are the seven that, that were appointed by God himself. These particular seven were were, in, in, uh, were, were started by him, and each one has a special meaning. But it, not only for the Jews, but it, my friends, that meaning, the meaning of those uh, festivals can also, they also have an impact upon our lives. They also say something to us in a prophetic way. And that's what we're going to be studying and finding out together as we go through the study. And the study should take us, by the way, up till just before, if not right at the beginning of what will be Holy Week this year, uh, the week prior to, to leading up to Easter. So, so be thinking about that and praying about it because I believe it'll enhance your, your, your uh, uh, Easter experience. It, it'll, it'll bless you and, and bring your heart closer to God as a result of it. Those are just some of the prayer concerns that we can look around today and not so many of us that we can't uh, recognize a few that are sitting around where we are and remember one another in prayer. Always take advantage of these moments to, to intercede on behalf of one another for we all need to be lifted up in prayer today. 
let us, let us go to God. Father, I do want to thank you that we do have again yet uh, this opportunity to come before you. We do not take it lightly. We do not approach you, Father, and I'm thinking that we have a right that is our established by our own doing, but it is ours because of Jesus Christ. And we come through him, for he is our high priest. And we, we come before you uh, as you uh, would welcome us uh, with thanksgiving and with praise in our, on our minds and our hearts and upon our lips. We praise you and give thanks to you. And we come at this particular time also with uh, the concerns uh, that have been laid upon our hearts. Uh, those that have been there for some time, and uh, as the uh, insert in our bulletin would certainly convey, but there are new concerns that also have been raised and those we've noted today as well. And we bring all of these to you as we bring one another before you. Praying, Father, again, that your, uh, that your will would be done in light of the things that are being requested. Uh, we, we are not here to tell you, Father, how to minister to us. We're here to, to seek your ministering, to trust your, your wisdom, to believe in you for the difference that is needed in light of every concern that we share in our lives and the lives of the people that we, we intercede for today. And we pray, Father, that you'll continue to bless our church. Here we are now, yet still new to this year that we have entered. Uh, and we know that the days that are going to come and they're going to pass so very fast. So help us to be, to be, Father, mindful of this. To not take the moments and the hours and the days for granted. And all, but to be wise in our use of the time in which we might be given. Uh, to be able to serve you better, to serve others, to not miss the opportunities that are going to come before us, to meet the challenges that we meet in such a way that, again, people see the strength, your strength in us, establishing us and holding us firm and face those challenges. Let everything be done, Father, through this church and through each person who is a part of this church family. It be done for your glory and for the good of others. Thank you. Thank you for hearing the concerns of our hearts, for conveying your heart to us as well. To you be all the praise yet again through Jesus Christ, for it's in his name we pray. Amen. At this time, I believe David is going to be sharing a message with the, the children, perhaps with all of us this morning. nice and bright and sunny outside, isn't it? Sure is. Do, do I need this today? No. What is this? An umbrella. An umbrella. Yeah. Well, what does an umbrella do? It keeps you from getting wet from the rain. You're so right. But you know what? If it's real, real sunny, did you know you could put an umbrella and keep the sunny, hot sun off your head too? You could. So... To me, when I see an umbrella, I think about the fact that it kind of creates a, a layer of protection. And that reminds me of prayer, because that's what prayer is. It's like a layer of protection. We, when we talk to God and tell him what we need and what's bothering us and what other people need and what's maybe their hurts and needs, and uh, he listens to us and, and it gives us some protection from the things we ask for help with. So, you know, and the thing about it is if you don't have your umbrella with you, guess what? Somebody else could probably hold their umbrella over your head. Well, that's like each of us praying for each other. And if you ever go to a big event, you see all the umbrellas, like church with all these people, and we're all praying for each other. It's like a great big area where the rain can't get to us. And so when you see an umbrella, think about how it can remind you is that when we pray, it protects us from the things that might make our hair mess up. Okay. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the children here. We thank you for the rest of the church. And we thank you that even in simple things, we can be reminded of your great power. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
I got you. <laughs> David was uh, wanting, uh, want, wants you to know now that Rachel Gibson that you need, if you're sending anything, is, lives in Justin, Texas. There's a lot of Rachel Gibsons in Texas. <laughs> so, so beware. <laughs> that, that Justin, Texas. That, that's where you want to send your card or your gift. Let us prepare to worship our God with our gifts. Ascribe to the Lord the honor that is due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Let us now worship God with our gifts. stand. Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us be in your house today and to hear your word. Thank you for all the abundant blessings you've bestowed upon us. Help us to take those blessings out into the world as we go this week. Please accept our tithes and offerings to help build your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be
may be seated. I believe I told you the very first Sunday of this year that uh, I would be preaching probably every Sunday this particular month uh, as if it were the first sermon of the year, uh, as a, a New Year's Day sermon, if you will. And I still feel compelled to do that, so the day's message will have that ring to it. Uh, if you have your Bible, turn with me to the New Testament where I'm going to be reading from the book of Hebrews. I'm reading out of the 12th chapter, and we're going to read the first three verses. That's Hebrews chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. It's going to be a long year. And if God chooses us to live this year, we can grow weary if we're not careful. We need to do what we need to do to keep, to keep, if you will, the enthusiasm, to keep the, the strong sense of commitment and joy and love that God means for us to have as we go forward into this year, walking with him and serving him. Let us pray. Father, I ask that you lead us uh, in this part of our service by helping me to be able to convey your heart to your people's hearts. And again, give me the words that I, I need to speak. Uh, give me the, the boldness uh, that I need to speak them with. And yet, the, the love uh, that goes along with that boldness as well. May they hear you above the speaker himself who stands in this pulpit. May their ears be more in tune to not so much everything that is said audibly as that which is spoken in that that very soft and quiet voice that you speak to us through your Holy Spirit so that we hear what we each need to hear from you and we each one know what you, what you desire of us in response to that which you are sharing with us this day. To you be the glory and the praise always through Jesus Christ for it's in his name we pray, amen. The title for my message today is, of course, the year itself, 2023, and my, the idea is let's make this all about Jesus. And the, the verse, the words that stand out to me in these three verses that I just read to you a few moments ago, I call again to your attention. They're found in verse 2, and it says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. I want to break down that those, those few words there, let us fix our eyes on Jesus before we go deeper into the message this morning. The words let us speaks of a united action. What is being called for here is not being issued to just any one person, though it is personal for each one of us, but it's being issued to the church as a whole, to all of us. This is a united action that is being called for. Fix our eyes speaks of a decisive action. And uh, it's uh, supposed to be not only a united action, but a decisive action. And uh, where we are determined to set our eyes upon him. More so than anything or anyone else, we are to focus on him. For it says, let us fix our eyes, and the third part is on Jesus, which means it is a single action. It's not Jesus and everything else in the world that matters, but it's Jesus who is at the top of everything else that matters. It's not that everything else is of, of no importance, it's just that he is of the greatest importance. So we fix our eyes on Jesus, a united action, a decisive action, a single action. 
so that he becomes the main focus and becomes the main uh, means by which we are motivated in which to live our lives in this year before us. And it is my prayer to, for you as it is a prayer for my own heart that I share with you today that all of us in this congregation will come to know him better as a result of this, that, they will, that we will come to love him more. And it's not to say you don't love him a lot now, but you'll love him even more. You see, God's love never has to be increased because it's perfect. But you and I, we, we are yet to have that perfect love as far as what we can convey. So our love is always in the process of becoming, of becoming something more than what it was. Not less than, but more than. So to love him more and to uh, re, uh, have a renewed enthusiasm this year in, in terms of our worship, in terms of our work, and our witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's my prayer for us, that we will, that God will open yet even doors, not only the doors that he has opened, keeping those doors open, but opening new doors for us to be able to serve him in other ways, to serve him in places we have yet to serve him. And I'll realize it again, though our numbers are not many, and all the God we serve is great. And, uh, and he, is, he, he doesn't need a lot of people to do a, a, do a great work. He just needs people who have hearts that are available and hearts that are willing for him to work in as well as to work through. Now, last Sunday when I was sharing with you, I talked about the importance of wisdom for what we are going to be facing in this coming year. But, and I differentiate it, because the Bible does, between the wisdom of this world, which will not lead us closer to God by any means. Whatever it attracts us to, whatever it calls attention to, will not be him, but the wisdom that comes from above, which causes us to understand and on what God's heart is, and, and to pursue that with all that we have. The Bible says in, in the book of Proverbs, in chapter 9, and in verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is the beginning of understanding. And you and I need to have that kind of fear. Now, it's not talking about a fear whereby we're so afraid of the Lord that we certainly, we don't want to get up near anywhere close to him. We're so afraid we have a tendency to want to run away from him. That's not the kind of fear that is being mentioned here in the Bible. The fear of what it, which it mentions here has to do with reverence and with awe, with the acknowledgement of his greatness and his superior, uh, his superior authority over our lives. And uh, that's the kind of fear we're talking about. And what I'm going to do in the remainder of my time with you this morning, I'm going to do sort of an acrostic, if you will. I'm going to take those four uh, word, letters of the word fear, and, it, and each one of them is going to give us a, a, a special point to remember with respect to the, to the verses that I read to you here out of Hebrews chapter 12. And if you're taking notes, you want to jot this down. For those of you who are worshiping with us online, I hope you have a pencil and piece of paper available because I hope you'll take these notes and you'll go back over these three verses at a time later on uh, in your own personal meditation and look at them more closely and think about them more deeply, if you will. The first one is this. Let Jesus be your focus for this year. Let Jesus be your focus let us fix our eyes on Jesus. And the word fix means to concentrate. It means, means to gaze upon something intently. It means to get up so close to what it is that you're looking at that everything else that is out there that might otherwise distract you it is hard to see because you're so close to what you're looking at and all the things that would normally distract you are now out of your vision. They're not where they can do that. They, can, they cannot distract you so easily. So let us think about that. When we talk about focusing on Jesus, we're talking about finding ways to get closer to the Lord this year uh, so that we, we don't lose focus of him or get distracted by the other things that are going on in the world around us. Now, I have confessed to you, and perhaps I even used it as an excuse from time to time, that I am ADHD. And if you know anything about uh, someone that has ADHD, you know that they are easily distracted. 
And uh, so it's not hard to, to get them uh, off of what they are supposed to be thinking about uh, and are supposed to be doing. And, uh, but uh, I've got a pill that I take, and I've been taking it for years. Uh, you know, it's something I've never grown out of as far as uh, ADHD, so I still take it when I need to to help me focus when I'm studying and when I, I'm doing things that I, I need to give a lot of concentration to. Unfortunately, I think there's a lot of Christians who have ADHD, spiritually speaking, and they have a hard time keeping their focus on God and on the things of God in their prayer life, in their reading of God's word, in their times of worship, in the work that they're supposed to be doing for the Lord. It's too easy for them to get distracted, and unfortunately, there's no spiritual pill out there that you can take that can help you to, to get you refocus and stay focused in the way that you should. The only way you and I are going to stay focused on the Lord this year is to get up close to him in our times of prayer. And maybe we have to spend more time in prayer to be able to do this. In our times of reading God's word, maybe we need to read more of God's word, or perhaps it's not so much that we read a lot more in any one sitting, but we read it a little more often each day, even if it's in small segments, in order that we spend more time in God's word. But focusing is a, a holy habit. Now, you know there are good habits, and you know there are bad habits. But these are things that we do over and over again so that they become natural more so than not. So that we are into them more likely than not into them. And, our, and we need to develop a whole, the holy habit of spending more time with the Lord, staying focused on him in the way in which uh, God wants us to, to go. And I know it's not easy. I know everything, I know what you know. I know the weaknesses of my flesh and the weaknesses of your flesh. It's hard for us to teach the flesh to be holy. <laughs> In fact, the flesh won't. That's why we have to be submissive to the Spirit. And now because the Spirit helps us in our new nature to get on track with God, our old nature is going to always want to lead us, if you will, uh, off, off the trail in which we are supposed to be on. And also, we got to do what we have to do. And here's something that might help you with your spiritual motivation this year. And, and I, I underlined this in my Bible, hoping that I would think about it and come back to it from time to time to continue to motivate me. It says, he is the author and the perfecter of our faith. Well, that, that, should, that should give you some encouragement. When you think about, you, you are not... You are not where you are if you are a Christian by anything that you have done. It's all because of what he did, because he stayed the course, because he stayed focused on who he was and what he came in this world to do. He was able to establish what was necessary to help you and me get on board with the Lord. And also, he, he is the author. He is the perfecter. He didn't leave anything that had to be done undone. He did it all, and he did it rightly. He did it perfectly. Let that be your motivation. And I'll let that be your motivation as you move forward into this year, knowing again that the one you are focusing upon and following and all is the author and the perfecter of who you are to be, of who you are to become. And all, he didn't bring you into God's family to leave you as you were before you got into the family, but he brought you in to make you different, to make you something special, to make you different in order that your life would become a greater difference in the world in which we live. So let Jesus be your focus. Number two, number two is this, let Jesus be your example. Let him be your example. And uh, again it says, Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame. Have you ever thought about that, that particular portion of, of verse 2? Who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame. There's two words that jump out at me when I read those words. The two words that jump out at me are the words joy and cross. And I think to myself, they shouldn't be in the same sentence. <laughs> they shouldn't be found together. Because when I think of joy, I think of ecstasy. 
When I think of the cross, I think of agony. And I think of two different things. I mean, that, they seem that far apart from one another. And yet here we find them joined together in the same sentence. They do go together for this reason. Even though Jesus didn't enjoy the cross, even though he didn't enjoy the shame, Jesus did have a joy even in light of all of this because he knew what he was accomplishing and he knew what it was going to bring about. He knew that he was completing the work of redemption. What was necessary for you and I to be saved. He knew he was going to be bringing glory to the Father. And he knew in all that he was defeating both the devil and death ultimately in what he was going to accomplish through the cross. And he knew he was going to be bringing lost souls into the kingdom. So for all the pain and all the suffering that he had to endure and the shame also that went along with it, he still counted it, accounted it joy because he knew that even though it and this, in one sense, it was working against him. In another sense, it was working a great thing through him that was going to be a blessing for all people, those people in, in particular who would accept his work of redemption that he was bringing about through the cross. You know, one of the things the Bible reminds me of when I say let's follow his example in light of this is that the servant is not greater than the master. <laughs> I'm reminded that my life is not meant to be an easy life. And that's, that's my tendency again. That's my tendency. And uh, I like to preach in a church in the wintertime where it's not cold. <laughs> and I like to preach in the same sanctuary in the summer when it's not hot. And I like the, the difference that is made through the system we have for making it cooler or warmer to meet the, my comfort levels. I like that. I'd rather be seated on a padded pew than on a rock in, uh, any day of the week. I like that. See, I, I'm, I, and, and I, I like the idea of comfort. You would much rather hear a, a 15 or 20 minute sermon than a 30 or 40 minute sermon because you are more comfortable with that. And, uh, you, and I, you and I like the things that that make it easier for us. But we are called to follow him. And the servant is not greater than the master. And we have to realize again, he lived as a suffering servant. He went through a lot of difficulties, a lot of hardships to be able to do the things he did to accomplish what he accomplished. And you and I have to accept that this year will be filled at points with trials and with tribulations and with testings. But this is all for the glory of God. And it's something, again, we should rejoice in, in the sense that if God can get glory through my life, even through my sufferings, does he not deserve it? Does he not deserve such glory? I'm reminded again that if we are going to follow Jesus' example, we're going to have to get involved, and that's going to be costly. And that's going to be sacrificial. But God is not looking this year in the churches across the world. He's not looking for spectators and all. He's looking for participators. He's looking for people who are willing to sell out to him because he's already sold out to us. He's looking for people who are willing to take that step. And even though you have taken a step in the past, he's looking for hearts that are ready to take yet another step here in this moment, in this present. No matter where, how far you have come, he's looking for hearts that are saying, Lord, I'm ready to go farther if you will take me there. I'm ready to follow you wherever you would lead. I'm ready, Lord, to be the person you want me to be. And while I've been this person for such a long time, if I could be something different, something more than, I'm ready for to be that person as well, if that's what you desire for me. Let Jesus be your example. Because he said, I have not come into this world to do my own will, but to do the will of him who has sent me, which was his Father in heaven. May that be our mindset and our heart's desire. Thirdly, let Jesus be your anchor. Let him be your anchor this year. We need an anchor. Boy, this world is going every which way, is it not? I mean, we live in a crazy world. 
and, uh, and we never know what the circumstances are going to be and, uh, and when they're going to change and how, how hard it can be when they do. We, we need something to anchor, be, have ourselves anchored to, lest we are driven back and forth by the fears and by, by the stresses of, of daily life. It says here that Jesus, after he did what he did, he went and he went back to heaven. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, you know what that means to me? That means more than one thing. For one, it meant his work was finished, okay? And, and, you know, in the, in the Old Testament, the, the one piece of furniture that you would never find in a, in a tabernacle or, or in the temple was a chair, because for the priests that were doing what they were doing and their sacrifices and other things that they did, their work was never done. They were always at work. So they, they never had the, the luxury of, of saying, well, we're finished and sitting down. There was always yet something more to do. Well, everything that was needed for your life and my life has been done through Jesus to the extent that he is sitting down. He's sitting down, not because he is tired, not because he just gave up, but because he finished what he came to do. And, and that, my friends, the fact that he's sitting on the throne, he's sitting at the right hand of God, means also says something about his power. It tells us that Jesus Christ is in control. He's in control. You and I live in a world, again, that seems to be so out of control. And even the people who we have elected and appointed to be in control, they're out of control. <laughs> so, so how can we hope they can find us anything to anchor our lives to when their lives are not even anchored? But Jesus is sitting on his throne. He never has to get up because there's something he had overlooked. Or there's something that trumped, if you will, or changed the impact of what he came to do and accomplished. He never has to get up and start all over again. He'll never have to come back and die on the cross. He'll never have to come back and do all the things that he had to go through and endure because he met those challenges and he accomplished what had to be accomplished in every respect. So he's our anchor. We anchor ourselves to him. Because while our lives are unfinished in many ways, and there's still much more for us to do, we are putting our faith in someone who is established. And because he is established, Paul tells us in his letter to the Philippians in the very first chapter, he says, this is where we are confident. We are confident that he who had began a good work in us will carry it on to completion. There's our confidence. When everything goes crazy in my life, I'm reminded. I'm reminded that the God who's still at work in me, he's still, he's, he, he, he is still able to finish that work and accomplish it to the purpose that he has in mind, to the end in which he has already determined. And I just need to hold unto him because he will hold unto me. His promises are certain. His power is certain. His plan is certain. Heaven doesn't have a plan A and a plan B. <laughs> Heaven doesn't need a plan B. It has but one plan, and that plan is a sure plan. The writer of Hebrews says this in the sixth chapter, and in verse 19, we have this hope. Not a, a, a hope in the sense of, I'm not sure, but I hope, but a hope in the sense that I know so hope. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. I like that. Isn't it great to know there's something in this world and which, upon which you can stand that is not going to be affected by whatever happens, whatever other, whatever other happens in this world, that's not going to somehow come out from under us? It's going to be there. It's going to remain there because it is Jesus Christ in whom our lives are anchored to, which brings me to the last point of my message this morning, and that is this. Let Jesus this year be your reassurance. Let him be your reassurance in every way that you need to be reassured. And we all need reassurance at times, do we not? We all need this. But let Jesus be your reassurance. Notice what he says here in verse 3. He says, consider him who endured such opposition 
from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. As I said, it's easy to grow weary. It's not always that hard to lose heart either. We've been there in the moment. Some of us have been there a lot longer than a moment. <laughs> and it's hard to get out of it when you get into that kind of a rut. But let us, let us, my friends, consider him. Let him be your reassurance. I, I like how the living, uh, how the message puts this verse, uh, and it's paraphrased. It says, when you find yourself flagging, and the word flagging means uh, becoming tired or losing your, 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 your dynamo, if you will, or your, 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 your vim. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over this story, his story, again, item by item, that long litany of hostility that Jesus plowed through that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. I like that. It'll shoot adrenaline into your souls. He has done everything that he was meant to do that it will impact your life and mine so that you and I can do everything we are meant to do through him. Everything we need to shape our lives, to strengthen us, to satisfy us, we're going to find in him. So let us, let us, my friends, make it all about Jesus, because indeed it is anyway. So let us personally, in our own hearts and minds, make it all about Jesus. Let us not falter in this race that we're running in 2023. There's no going back. We, could, we couldn't if we wanted to. And all, but there should be no holding back either in terms of giving everything that we have to the Lord. And all, but we should be pressing forward for the goal. The goals that he set before us for this year and for eternity as well. Remember this, the Lord Jesus Christ has already won the race, if you really think about it. <laughs> He's already won the race. He's already won the war. He's already met the enemies that we're going to be meeting over and over again. And uh, he's met them and he's defeated every one of them. So you and I, through him, are assured the victory. Let us live with that might and that understanding. Let us be reassured that we have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for these words of a challenge and, and of encouragement that come to us from the writer of Hebrews that calls our attention and all to the one who is the difference, who's the difference of whether we're looking in our past or we're looking now in this moment in our present, or even if we are going to look down the road into the future, he remains the one constant and the difference that we need for our lives. Help us to give our hearts fully to him in every way so that it's not just something that we say, but it's something that we actually are doing with our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. As we stand and we sing our hymn of invitation, I invite you to respond if the Holy Spirit is moving your heart to do so. you yet again to stay for the meal that has uh, been prepared and waits us in the uh, fellowship hall. Everyone is invited to come and be a part of this uh, time of fellowship.
Thank you for being here today. And for those of you online who've been worshiping with us, thank you. Thank you for choosing to worship with this church on this particular day. Father, we pause yet again before you, thanking you. Thanking you for remembering us in every way. You haven't overlooked anything that we're ever going to have to face, anything we're ever going to have to go through, anything that's ever going to matter for our lives has already been addressed through your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus. We rejoice in your presence for that reason and give thanks. Help us, Father, to find it within our hearts and how to, to give ourselves fully to you in every respect, holding nothing back, and all that would keep us from running the race with everything that we can, we have within ourselves, taking hold of everything you have and that you're offering us through your son. Father, bless the foods that await us and the nourishment they will give to our bodies. We pray all of this through Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>